Hi internet, I'm Udoka. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This is a reshoot and re-upload because I talked about this last night and the audio wasn't working. What fun. So here I am. Better dressed than than last night. Um, if you're subscribing to the channel, subscribe because you like my vibe. Because my content, there's no guarantee where my content's going to go. I talk about my own mental health, my life journey, and also my two cents on, on stuff that I'm interested in. And I'm just like you. I be sitting here watching YouTube, procrastinating, having it in the background and all that. So we're interested in similar things, huh? So... I do not enjoy watching Trisha Paytas. I don't. But people wanted me to comment on this Keeping the Lice Going video that she uploaded where she reveals her view of lies um, through the context of this new movie called Dear Evan Hansen, which I'll explain. And I also want to talk about Blair White, who mentioned Trisha by name, um, and some of the insights that you can gather and glean from that. Trisha Paytas is such an interesting case study. I mean, the mind and world of Trisha Paytas is bizarre. It's, it's like, for some, incomprehensible. And it's like a train wreck that you just can't look away from. And you just want to understand, like, why? Like, how and why? <laughs> So let's take a look at this video and I want to preface it with some spoilers of the Dear Evan Hansen because you need to understand this movie, this musical, this book. I think it's a book first and they made it a musical then um, now it's a movie. In the musical theater world, there was controversy about this. By the way, I, I realized that Whenever I have video playing on my screen, this video is going to get really choppy. And if there is a screen recording app that can have things play smooth, please let me know in the comments. I am willing to invest to get it. Um, I don't make <laughs> I literally have not received a paycheck from Google. I don't make money from this, uh, from my YouTube channel, at least not yet. Who knows about the future? This is a hobby of mine. So I do put in my own personal finances to improve it because it's, that's just what you do when you have a hobby that you enjoy. So please leave in the comments below a good screen recording app program that I can use from now on that will give my video better quality. Okay. So Dear Evan Hansen, it's about this young boy. Oh, so the mu in the musical drama world, the drama is they didn't like, look at this lead actor, you know, look at him. Does he look like a high schooler? No. And the defense for him was, well, that's typical of Hollywood. In Hollywood, you get people who are older to play high schoolers. Um, so the drama is that, why are you having this older guy play a high schooler? Um, and people felt like there was nepotism going on because the director or producer or somebody is this actor's father. So people just feel like this movie was really just made to cement this guy's career in stone <laughs> because you know musicals are live right that you you can't submit you don't cement yourself as well as having a feature film and for this movie in particular it is important that the character looks young looks young enough to actually really pass for a high schooler there are other characters who are older and they're playing high schoolers, but it's, you know, they're kind of more looking the part than he is. I can't imagine what it's like to be the actor's name is Ben Plath. I can't imagine what it's like to 
have everybody just talking about how horrible you look. I'm sorry. If I was Ben Plath right now, I would not want to look at the reviews. I do not want to see people, you know, dogging me, trying to say I look old. And this man is only, how old is he? Ben Plath is... That song is stuck in my head. By the way, that's a Nigerian song. I know Morocco and North Africa just took it over because they had a Moroccan rapper get on the beat. But that song is Niger. But I do like his remix on it. Why is it not showing me his age? Oh, because I click news. Okay, he's 28 years old. Okay. So Ben Plath is still young. He's still young, okay? And there are other 28-year-olds who play high schoolers. Um, Rachel McAdams was like 27 when she played Regina on Mean Girls, okay? I can't imagine. I don't know what it's like. I don't know what it's like for to be in your 20s and people are talking about this grown ass hell man looking old as hell. He got wrinkles. People are talking about how this dude got wrinkles on his forehead. He got. <laughs> I'm like, that's y'all need to stop this dude. He's still in his 20s. Like, I don't know. I could not. I could not read that. I could not. I could not be, he's still a young adult. He's still relatively young. I could not be reading reviews, people talking about, oh, he, he had that ugly looking wig on to hide his forehead wrinkles. Mm -mm. No, so Ben Plath, you're never going to see this video, but I am so sorry with the crap that you're having to go through because um, <laughs> I sympathize. I would not be able to handle it. I would not. I would not. People talking about, look at Udoka. She playing a high schooler, but she got wrinkles around her mouth. She looking old. She looking mature as hell. Meanwhile, my 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 castmates are a year younger than me. <laughs> I would feel so bad. But, you know, you know, it's like, mm, he is looking mature. He's looking like a, of an adult. He's looking adult and it would be better to have a younger person because this character makes stupid mistakes. This character lies a lot. And so the plot is dear Evan, ha Evan Hansen is a kid. He's socially awkward. I don't know if he's on the spectrum or just has anxiety or whatever. I don't know, but He's socially awkward. He doesn't have friends. I think he has like one friend. And he fell out of a tree, broke his arm. So he has a cast. And his therapist, either his mom or his therapist recommended that, no, the therapist recommended that he type letters to himself, like love letters, friendship letters, letters talking about, you know, you're just so great, Evan, you know, to boost self-esteem. So he's been writing these letters to himself and he printed it one day. He goes to school and there's this bully named Connor. Connor is actually a jerk. Um, and I, by the way, I haven't seen the musical and I haven't seen the movie yet. I just kind of generally know the plot because I enjoy musical theater. Like sometimes there are some shows that I just can't find it or I didn't have time because I'm not going to go see it live. I'm not balling. I'm not balling like that. I'm not balling like that. So shout out to everybody who uploads the bootleg versions on YouTube and whatnot because you do real MVP. You really trying to make musical theater accessible for the folks, for the kids. But anyway, um, Connor um bullies him kind of and he finds one of Evan's letters and he keeps it um I think he gets upset that his sister is mentioned in one of the letters because Evan has a crush on Connor's sister and he's uh he's like I'm gonna just sign my name on your cast because that's so lame that no one signed your cast and um, it's going to look like I'm not bullying you. So he signs his cast, Connor, okay? The only person to sign his cast. And he has Evan's nice letter to himself. 
now Connor unlives himself. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. Connor's family is apparently like a crappy family. So apparently people are like, I would unlife myself too if I was in that family or whatever. I don't know the details. But Connor's parents find this letter in Connor's pocket and they're like, we need to find Evan Hansen. And the parents are like, Evan, our boy Connor had no friends. By the looks of this letter, you were such a wonderful friend. And Evan's like, no, actually, you know, we weren't friends. And the parents are like, honey, there's no, you don't need to be shy. We see that he's the only person who signed your cast. You guys were friends and we appreciate you. And we want you in our life because you remind us of our son, Connor. And so Evan just goes along with the lie and it's lie on top of lie on top of lie. We've all seen, haven't we as a kid, we all saw those episodes of Rescue Rangers or Darkwing Duck or whatever. You know, there's always an episode where it happens like that. Like it's just a little lie and then it's lies on top of lies on top of lies. And then at the end of the episode, the character learns, hey, it's bad to lie no matter how good it makes you look. So the whole, in this movie, in this show, Evan really looks like he's really not a good guy because he keeps lying on top of lies, where at first you might think, well, he's a socially awkward kid. He didn't know what to do, but he really starts to instigate these lies. He, and he's instigating them because they're making him look good. It's for his benefit. He's about to get a scholarship to go to college. He's about to, you know, he's hooking up with his crush, the the sister of the gone boy, right? Like, it's just all of these self-motivated reasons to keep the lie going, right? So at the end of the movie, he's found out to be a liar I know they handle it differently in the movie than they do in the musical. I think in the musical, everybody finds out. And in the movie, just the parents find out. I, You know, I don't know. But the point is, he learns his lesson, right? He learns that it's not good to lie and I need to, like, stand up for my own integrity. And it's important that the character looks young because if it's a young person, you can at least empathize that this is a young person who is very naive and he learned a very important valuable lesson to take with him into adulthood but when it's an adult when it's somebody who you just can't you just can't get it out of your mind that this is a full-grown person it just comes off as really gross it it just comes off as really sketchy you know what I'm saying It, it reminds me of let me show you this one scene Okay, so this is from the show, the the movie, The Greatest Showman. It's a movie musical. It has Hugh Jackman. Okay, look at this freaking scene right now. Hugh Jackman was like in his late 40s when they filmed this, right? Okay, just, just look at this. So he's fallen in love with a lady. of your daughter and I will give her life as grand as this one. Okay. So that scene when you when I watched that movie I was just like, excuse me, sir, you are as old as the father is. Why are you asking for permission to <laughs> why are you asking permission to take this also grown ass woman out on a date? It's just you just, it's hard to suspend your disbelief. It's hard to just be like, it's a young guy. It's a, it's a, it's a guy. He, it's a 19 year old guy. He's 19. He's 21. This is a fully grown as hell, 48 year old man asking a dude who's probably nearly the same age. Can I ask your 40 year old daughter <laughs> to go on a date? So anyway, so I understand the complaints. Okay, so now that you understand the context, and I've been talking for 12 minutes, honey, you just like, I want to hear the take on Trisha. Now, listen to what Trisha has to say, because it's very revealing as to how her mind works. Like 100% sure about what I had, like what I thought it was. He, (laughs) he freaking admits to not knowing Connor at the end, which I was like, 
So according to the article we read, they said that that was to like, which I was like, why would you admit to lying? That's just such a foreign concept for her. Like hold him accountable so his character took accountability, which what, what is everyone's fascination with like keeping people accountable these days? What is everyone's fascination with it? I don't know. You were really into it for almost two years, Trisha. So maybe you can answer that question. Why were you so interested in holding people accountable and holding people accountable for things that don't require accountability? Imagine asking a 17-year-old to hold herself accountable for not liking to eat snails. Honestly, like just some things you just need to lie. Like I was talking about this. Some things you just need to lie? Why? This is something that he should have just kept the lie going because kept the light going so she watched this movie she saw how at first he was trying to not lie and then he just went along with it and she saw how he kept adding on top of the lies so in Trisha's opinion he really should have just kept going with lying more and more and more see Trisha this is why you always get caught in your lies because you think the right action is not to just clarify your lie own up to your lie apologize for your lie you think the right action is to add more lies on top of lies so it's hard to keep up with your lies and that's why you keep getting caught I was like it just it made him awful it made the family feel awful like Actually, the family f already felt awful because their son is gone. Okay. So it's not, it's not, it's not a boy's responsibility to soothe the hearts of a grieving family. It's not his responsibility. And it made him feel awful because <laughs> he had to learn a lesson. Learning lessons isn't fun sometimes, but at the end of the story, he grows. That's why we're watching the story. What kind of story would this be if we're watching this show about a guy who's lying for his own benefit, and at the end of the movie, he just is on top of the world based on the lies? We, we wouldn't watch that movie. Trisha, I don't even know if you would watch that movie. But I mean, I know what you're saying, gonna say, but because the no, email, I just no, but I think that when he when he came clean, he basically there was nothing else for him to face because right, like he hit bottom, everyone thought the worst of him, and from there he could only go up, and it made him stronger. wait. On what part everyone thought the worst of him after he confessed to lying, yeah, but before that, no one thought bad of him. So that's the most important thing. The most important thing is how people perceive you, not having your own integrity and doing the right thing just how people perceive you no but at the beginning nobody knew he existed mm -hmm. then suddenly it became this like oh my god this guy that gave this amazing speech that's why he kept lying friends. and then he dropped down to he's a liar he made all this up and that's why he stopped comeback. lying but then he faced that and i think that's what made him stronger at the end at the end he's like yes. a bit of a different person but this is again i know and everyone's like well, Asher would defend a liar but like you have to look at why the person is lying like he actually was like lying because he was trying to tell people and then he's like honestly they just need this comfort right now no that's not he didn't he was trying to tell people and he didn't rationalize his lie by saying they honestly just need this comfort he was trying to tell people he's socially awkward so he couldn't like be very assertive and then he saw the clout and the goodwill he was getting from these lies he wasn't lying for the sake of everybody's feelings he was lying because he was becoming the man and even if he was lying for the sake of the family it's not his responsibility that's an important lesson for a young person to learn that you are not responsible for the feelings of other people especially grown adults that's an important lesson to learn so it's just so interesting that to Trisha, that is more important than being honest, how you're perceived, how you make people feel, being the hero, being the hero. Wow, you just made me feel so good. Being that hero is more important than telling the truth and not getting in debacles in the first place they need to have a connection to connor and right. but at the end it's, by the, the end everyone 
he's not responsible for being that connection to Connor. Like, that's so gross. I don't know. How is she okay with, like, this idea of living a lie or pushing a lie? I'm just not, like, I, I, I will never understand. Because there are people in this world who are like Trisha. There are people in this world who, who truly believe that sometimes a lie is better than reality. And it's better to just push the lie than to push reality. And I disagree wholeheartedly. I can't. I can't do it. That's one of the reasons why I left a really toxic workplace that I used to work at because after being promoted, I saw that we were literally being lied to and they were asking us to lie more, lie to the workforce, lie to people who are depending on us for, you know, their family's livelihood. That's not okay. That, that, I don't understand this idea of feeling better. It's better to live in a dream world than to actually know the truth and reality. But for Trisha, a dream world, she lives in a dream world. So maybe she thinks everybody else should live in a dream world. Right. Because at the end, the parents got the video of the kid. Look at her face. She just can't comprehend it. The orchard was there. The sister. Ew. This is why I can't watch. I can't watch. It's so annoying. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. This is a situation where I was really, like, bummed, and then they kind of ended up with the family. You were bummed. She was bummed that the character learned a like, lesson. Not, and I want to see any... If the character didn't learn this lesson, the character will grow up to be like you. That would bum. That would be bum. That would make us feel Original, bum. Again, you guys correct me if I'm wrong. I think they had, like, a scholarship for Connor that he got the scholarship. So, like, they were trying to give him money in the movie, I think. So, I think right, he ended up... That's, that's part of why he was lying, so... He can get that money. Right. So he ended up getting the money. But anyways, I don't know. I really just don't think that he should have admitted to that. That's like one of those like lies you just got to like keep going with. But I think Trisha thinks life is a lie that she should keep going with. I don't know. I, like it, I think it just hurt the family. Because then he would have a girlfriend based on a lie. He would be going to college with money based on a lie. And he would literally start building the foundation of his adult life off of a lie. And he would just have to keep the lie going and he would learn that it's good to lie. So to Trisha, a happy ending would be a character who learns to lie for the rest of their life. And then everyone thought the family... The family was hurt before he admitted to it. When he admitted, he resolved them from it. Yeah, but they weren't going to say anything because they didn't want him to ruin his life and people did look at him funny and then gave him probably even more of a complex. Yes, that's, that's what happens when you lie. And people find out that you lie. They look at you funny. That's normal. And Connor's parents were afraid he's going to take his own life. Right. But he didn't. That's what well, I'm we saying. don't know. We don't know what happened to Evan after the, the movie ended. <laughs> but at the end, Evan is stronger. And then he meets the sister. At the end, he's a stronger person that did not take his own life. He was able to face the consequences. He grew. He grew. Well, we didn't Probably. see him grow. We don't know if he grew from it. Yes, you do. You, a movie doesn't just end like, you're a horrible person and the movie ends. No. The movie comes to a resolution. We see... Evan is in a better place and they usually end the movie with some sort of hint at what's in Evan's future, which is usually going to be a hopeful thing. So you, you're being disingenuous. And, I mean, him, and, uh, and then he sits down and write a new letter and he's all like, yeah, about it. it is a, it is a controversial plot. Anyways, even the play, like a lot of people think Evan is a bad character because he did lie and he did all this. He is, he is, but that's the point. That's the point of the play. That's the point. It, it, it's literally like your Saturday morning cartoon where the character is lying. And at the end of the 25 minute episode, the character learns, oh, I'm sorry, guys. I guess I'll just, I'm going to tell the truth from now on. Like, that's the whole point. Like, the point is, yes, Evan was a bad guy. And then he learned that he was a bad guy. So now he will no longer be a bad guy in the future where it's worse stakes like be like being a bad guy as a teen and learning your lesson is so much better than being the bad guy as an adult like Trisha Paytas and potentially having the mindset like Trisha Paytas where you don't learn your lesson stuff like that like people actually like really go come for that character they think he's like not good but yeah like, that's the point that's how I felt. the movie the movie the musical comes for that character there is a whole song coming for the character that's the point 
What do you mean you don't like illness? If you don't like that aspect of people not liking Evan, then you don't like the musical because the musical tells you to have that perspective on Evan. When the parents found out that he lied, when he was at their house, and then after that with his mom, that's what I felt. I felt like, what a horrible person. Like, this is a horrible person. But it's not a horrible person. It's someone who has right. anxiety that has gotten in a bad situation, but he's not a bad person. He, he, yes, when you lie for your own financial gain, romantic gain, and clout, that's bad. You're being a bad person. But you can change, especially if you're young. You can change. And other people need to know. Okay. Is this what Trisha has an issue with? She feels like people can't change? His intentions were good. The outcome was good. That's why I feel that when he admitted to lying, he became a good character again. And then all Oh my gosh, forgiven. she just but doesn't get that, it. Look like, at her mm -hmm. face. You hear that? She goes, like she disagrees. She doesn't get it. Ew, I can't. How do you, how are y'all watching? I can't look at her. How do you look at her face? No, but that's a real human. A real human sometimes make bad decisions and that doesn't mean they're a bad person. Yeah, like that's how all musicals are. All musicals are displaying something aspect that's real in humanity. That's why people love musicals because you connect and you relate so much and you watch the characters grow and change. That is, that is musicals. That are that is movies. That's a good movie. Right. So I don't know. I don't like that people like come so hard on him, and I think that's like that's the, the first Broadway character that's like real, and I he's love that. First. And, like, he's definitely not the first Broadway character to display human naivete, human stupidity, and human growth. Like, I, don't know. I really love Evan Hansen, so I don't like that people shit on it. And also okay, whatever. So um, now let's look at Blair White. What Blair White has to say, honey. Now. Let me give you a little bit of background on Blair White. Blair White used to be on conservative YouTube. I am um, conservative YouTube has kind of really gone down, especially since the apocalypse. Uh, conservative YouTube, PragerU, Alex Jones, when he used to be on here, just a whole bunch of people. A lot of conservative people have been banned from YouTube. So conservative YouTube has died down. You have to like really actively seek it to be on that side of YouTube. Um, but it used to be really popular. It was the anti SJW, um, which everybody was on that bandwagon, even Ethan Klein, who now is having a left wing podcast. He, you know, kind of was touching that conservative YouTube, um, line when he used to do anti SJW content. So, um, so, in that regard, I did not care for Blair White whatsoever at all. Um, she then she came out with a video talking about how she realized that conservative YouTube is fake. A lot of these people don't even really believe the things that they're saying. They're just saying it for shock value. They're saying it for clout. Um, they're tokenizing her because she's a trans woman, which, you know, it's kind of like how they use us black women as like the pinnacle of leftism. They use trans people as another pinnacle of leftism. Like, like our literal existence is like the holy grail of leftism. It's so, it's so, so offensive. It's such an offensive way of viewing us, but that's what they did. And she realized that people were using her and it's like, no, no, duh. No, like you really think people are coming with good faith arguments and you're defending them. And she realized that she's she's helping to defend these fake ass people. And so she's like, I'm no longer going to do that type of content. Hold on a sec. So I decided, OK, I'll watch your content. Like, let me see what you're about. And she was doing stuff about predators. Um, you know, that stuff like intrigues me um, a little like predator, true crime, you know what I mean? And I was into that. And then I found some old stuff that she said about like literal N word with a hard R and blackface and stuff like that. I'm like, girl, what was wrong with you? You really, you really, you really thought conservative YouTube edge lording was, was it like, I was just so like, Oh my God. Like, why are we, why are we a joke to people? Why is our existence a joke to people? And you of all people who's part of a marginalized community, like that's so disgusting. She apologized for it. 
she deleted it. She song and dance. Um, and then she started posting more content about predators and I, I kind of realized that she was, she's, uh, one of those respectability politics people. Um, you know, like one of those people who, if you're, as long as you're a good trans, as long as you're a good minority, you'll be accepted by larger society. And we all know that's not how, that's not how it works. It doesn't matter how good you are. You're st- if you're if you are that identity, you're not really accepted. If they don't want to accept you, they don't want to accept you. It doesn't matter how good you are. It doesn't matter how much you contribute to society. It doesn't matter how much pandering and begging for acknowledgement that you have the right to exist. It doesn't matter. Like for some people, for some bigoted people you shouldn't exist. And I noticed, and that's the kind of attitude that she had when she first entered YouTube. And I noticed she still kind of had remnants of it because when she was talking about some of these predators and some of these, and she was making fun of some of these trans people that she called trans trender, meaning, you know, she believes there are these trans people who are faking their trans identity for attention and she would always know, you know, that she's prettier than them or whatever. And it's kind of like, mm, if you're going to start, ta- if you're going to start pulling that one, that, you know, they're less valid of a trans person than you because, because you're prettier. I don't know. I mean, I can understand, like, maybe she was trying to make it a joke, but it was giving me, you know how I mentioned a while back creep show art was giving me bad vibes. She would talk about people who who did something bad and we can talk about what they did that's bad, but she would include, I don't know, she would include things that's just like, that's like below the mark that people let slide because we're talking about a deplorable person, but, but really you shouldn't say that. And that's what I was getting from Blair. And then my last straw where I was like, this girl, truly believes in respectability politics and it it just bothers me that bothers me so much I couldn't watch her her content anymore because I saw her go on this uh, debate with other conservatives it was a conservative chick a literal fascist an ex-liberal and Blair and you know the fascist is talking about fascism whatever the ex-liberal is talking about you know the normal discourse that we have okay about politics Blair White also kind of Blair White was kind of similar to the ex-liberal just talking about common sense type of stuff and then the conservative chick was so rude just so disrespectful she kept addressing Blair she kept saying Blair you know what you just need to stop talking the best thing that you can do is delete your YouTube channel, stop being trans, grow your mustache and get off the internet and stop making people think that that being trans is okay. Um, she was like very disrespectful. The moderator had to shut her up. The ex, the ex liberal was trying to stand up for Blair. Of course, the fact, the fascist isn't saying nothing. The fascist is, is sitting there eating his popcorn because the fascist is like, yeah, if I could have the country ran the way I went ran, people like Blair wouldn't exist either. <laughs> you know what I mean? But Blair was just sitting there, you know, trying to, you know, like six and glue. What's it called? I'm rubber, you're glue, whatever you say bounces off of me and sticks onto you. You know, just trying to be, you know, while the lady's insulting her, she's just like, so anyway, as I was saying, the political discourse in the environment today, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, Blair, are you really just going to try to ignore that? And that was just a representation to me of she really, truly believed that if she just behaved with grace and elegance, that this conservative lady is going to accept her. Or maybe she accepted that the conservative lady isn't going to accept her. But she believes that if she behaves with grace and elegance and just ignores it, that everyone watching is going to be like, oh, wow, 
wow, what a, what a lady, that trans woman is more of a lady than her or whatever she probably thought. And I just felt like, girl, that is so, that's so disgusting. Like, because if you're allowing somebody to talk in your face like that, that means you don't care when people do it to other people in your community. Um, you really think this respectability politics is going to work, but I'm just like, girl, that is how a lot of conservatives, I would wager to say most conservatives, I would wager to say most people who align themselves with conservatism and definitely if they are conservative and evangelical Christian, if they are that combination, Blair, I'm sorry, the evangelical Christians are running the Republican Party. They are the ones who are helping push forward Republican uh, policies. And if you think for a second that these people believe your existence is valid, you are out of your mind. It doesn't matter how much of a lady you behave. They do not want you and they don't want you in their party anyway. End rant. So I haven't been watching her on her main channel, but I like her as a person. I've been watching her grow and change and do a lot of apologies. And I just find her interesting as a person. Um, she recently left LA, moved to Austin, Texas. Yeah, us Texans, we're not really cool with all these Californians coming. How long have I been? I've been, I've been talking for 40 minutes, honey, child. Thank y'all for watching. <laughs> but anyway, us Texans. I mean, Blair's like, everyone's so nice here. It's like, yeah, I mean, when you're not in the room, we're like, oh my gosh, I wish these Californians would stop coming here. But no, we're going to be nice to you. Like, we're chill. We're going to hang out. That's the thing about Texas is, I mean, oh, Lord, regardless of the politics, the main thing, the, Texas is the state that voted for George W. Bush. Okay. Te Texas, that's how I envision te Texas is like George W. Bush. Okay. Ideologically, a lot of things that you can't stand, but on a person one-on-one -on -one level, it's like, <sighs> so hard to be mad at you. <laughs> type of thing. You know what I mean? I just want, I feel like I can drink a beer with them. That's how, te that's how Texans actually are. <laughs> like on a one-on-one -on -one level, you feel like, I can't believe I want to slaughter you in the polls, but <laughs> you know, thanks for the hospitality. Anyway, she's been enjoying it here. Um, and I think that's great. I think a lot of these LA people, these LA YouTubers, I can imagine being an LA YouTuber, the stress of First of all, the people you have to deal with, because you have to, we watch YouTube, we see how dumb your counterparts are, having to deal with these dumb people, having to socialize with them, having to rub shoulders, having to deal with fakeness, having to be fake yourself to try to get ahead, always so having to worry about your career on YouTube, where you you know, you, the money's just so up and down, um, you don't get as much notoriety, I mean, it's just, that is a lot of stress, that's a lot of pressure. Oh, when I was younger, I really wanted to go to LA. I really wanted to experience it. But now that I'm older and like, as you get older, you realize what your values are, what you care about your, you, you know, you value your peace of mind. It's like, no child, you couldn't pay me to live there. You couldn't pay me to live there and try to live that life. But let's hear what she had to say about Trisha Paytals. Oh, this is too fast. Hold on. Let's. were like low-key little sociopaths sometimes i feel if you wanted to be successful on youtube like mega successful i'm not talking about get you a hundred thousand subscribers 200 subscribers you could be you know a chill person and do that there are even chill people who get to a million subscribers but if you want to be mega successful like you want to be the face of youtube some of these people, honey child, some of these people are sociopathic and where they, they appear that way, they treat people that way. And it's kind of like, well, 
What do you expect? Something like YouTube, something where you're looking at your face, people are looking at you, people are hearing your thoughts. That definitely tends to attract a certain type of person. Um, just like the workplace that I left was really, really toxic. The, the guy in charge was really, really toxic. And he attracted other toxic people. So when I look at the people who didn't leave that workplace, I'm like, yeah, I get it makes sense that you're there because you are also toxic. You know, one of the one of those people who defend like you, you, you ever hear how some of these people defend Trisha Paytas as lies like like somehow they, they figure out a way to defend it. And I don't mean by like because people think. Oh, just because I don't like Mysterious T, it means I'm defending Trisha Paytas. No, you can dislike two people at the same time. I'm talking about people who, like, without trying to diss anybody else, literally defend Trisha Paytas' actions. And you're just kind of like, are you delusional? Yeah, th- like, sometimes this type of work, it attracts a certain type of person. And I'll explain if you ever have like a falling out with someone who is a YouTuber, if they make videos about other people, then you have to like sleep with one eye open. Like, are they going to make some like crazy hit videos so about me or at least like personal things I've told them because that has happened to me as well. There's only one name. I'm- That's so stressful. I, could, I couldn't deal with that. Even now, I don't have many subscribers at all. My videos get like maybe 50 to 100 views. But even now, it's like, oh, if somebody makes a video about me. Oh, I have to prepare my heart. I will name in this video, and it's not because I'm like coming out this with hatred or talking shit. I'm coming out because it genuinely hurt my feelings. Like, so I was never best friends with Trisha Paytas. We filmed, we did two things together. I did her podcast, she did a video on my channel. Um, even though we weren't like best friends, we were very friendly. And I remember when there was a bunch of drama last summer with me and um, Jeffrey Star and Shane Dawson, like, I felt comfortable and friendly enough with Trisha that like I was sending a voice note to her and I was like, so if you don't know that drama, this was drama get in 2.0, I believe, where Shane Dawson said that James Charles needs a slice of humble pie. And then all that stuff came out about Shane Dawson. And then, you know, people are coming about coming out with about Jeffree Star. Like if something happens to me, just know Jeffree Star did it. Like people literally saying that on camera. If something happens to me, if I wind up gone, just know it was Jeffree Star. That's what people were saying. And Blair White was one of them. So in case you wanted to know what is that drama. And Trisha Paytas at the time felt like she was good friends with Shane. She was uneasy with Jeffree. And I think she eventually decided I'm Jeffree's not my friend. And then after that, she decided Shane Dawson's not her friend, but like crying in it and like I won't get specific about it obviously but basically like I really really liked Trisha and I thought she really really liked me I mean she, she was asking me to be on her OnlyFans and, like I forget how long yeah Trisha is definitely one of those people who if you're naive and I just feel like Blair is just so naive sometimes I mean the fact that she was surprised that conservative YouTube was full of fakers like she was genuinely surprised to the fact that she was surprised that people tokenize her because she's trans. The, like, there's just so much. I'm like, you are so. The fact that she believes in respectability politics and will allow someone to disrespect her to her face and say that she needs to no longer exist to her face. I'm just like, you are so naive. Like, oh my God. Like, how have you been surviving? <laughs> how have you been surviving life? <laughs> but like even if you're not even if you feel like you're kind of careful Trisha Paytas is definitely one of those people who will make you feel like oh I love her she's so much fun she's she's so nice to me you know what I mean you ever been in those in that situation where like there's somebody who you just think is awful, but then there are people like, oh, I don't know what you're talking about. They're nice to me. It's so annoying. But Trisha Paytas is one of those people like you, you'll feel like, oh my gosh, are we becoming friends? She'll be like, yeah, you're, we're besties. 
But I'm one of those people who, whenever someone's like becoming my friend, I'm very suspicious. I'm like, what do you want? Even sometimes, even while we're friends, they you might slip, you might slip up a little bit, and I might be like, "Are you using me?" Mm. <laughs> you know, I don't know. So, so you gotta trust, trust, trust is trust is hard to come by. I remember being at a bar. And I was having like a great night and then all of a sudden I get this text from someone saying Trish is bashing you on TikTok. And I'm like, this is why I'm not friends with influencers because it looks like they're friends with you and they're friendly until they can benefit from you. Like she brought me yep. on the podcast because she was in all this turmoil for her transgender controversy coming out as trans. Mm -hmm. And then she basically got what she wanted out of me. She wanted yes. a trans person on her podcast to make it seem like she wasn't in the wrong for her whole trans controversy. Then as soon as I wasn't of use to her, she's bashing me on her TikTok. Mm -hmm. And it was just very hurtful. Like I remember, like I wasn't mad. I, I didn't respond. I didn't send her an angry text. Like I don't do that. So it's like Trisha asks, what is up with people's obsession with accountability? I don't know. Why did you bash Blair White on your TikTok, Trisha? Well, what was what was needed? What? Why did you need to hold her accountable for what? For what? Blair's going to tell us for what in a sec. That it was just really sad and it really hurt my feelings. So that's one example. That would hurt my feelings, too. I do. Re I relate to Blair a lot when she's on this I subscribe to this Blair Black because I relate to her a lot. Like she is, that's what I find about a lot of conservatives. When I, when I befriend somebody who's conservative, the main thing is that they just, they just want common sense. They just, I don't know. There are conservatives who are actually just normal people. <laughs> um, they're like, those libertarians i'm sorry libertarians i know y'all are like no we're the original liberals sure but in today's political climate you are conservative if you're a if you're a libertarian you are conservative you're republican shout out to y'all who are voting green party and independent and whatever but you're conservative and I tend to, it's just, I don't know, it's easy for me to make friends with people like that. And I feel like Blair's kind of like that. Now, what the TikTok, because I can't find that, the TikTok, but Blair's going to explain what, what Trisha said in that TikTok. And that one I really didn't care about because I never liked him anyways. Trisha thing definitely hurt my feelings, especially because the thing that she was bashing me for on her tiktok was me talking about how i felt like my gender dysphoria was a mental illness and you can disagree you can agree or whatever at the end of the day the clip now that take gender dysphoria being a mental illness that is a hot take um listen i don't get too much in the transgender stuff um you know it's just not my place. I'm just like, I'll let that community hash it out. That community can hash it out. And then you can come out to the public, let us know the conclusion. <laughs> but when it comes to somebody talking about what they feel about themselves, you have the right. You have the right to talk about how you feel. The same way Trisha wants the right to talk about how she feels. She wants that right so much that she wants to be able to literally lie and have nobody get mad at her for lying. Like Trisha has a whole podcast called My Chemical Imbalance where she's not talking and discussing mental health from, you know, of like a professional perspective. She's discussing it from her personal perspective and she wants the to be allowed to grace to do so. So why can she allow Blair the grace to do that as well? If she used me talking about that. By the way, I personally don't think gender dysphoria is a mental illness. I definitely can understand how it can feel that way because so much of our life is gendered and it, can cause I think it can lead to a lot of other bad feelings but in my opinion because 
our gender roles are made by society. Some people feel like, well, there's a biological basis. No, I disagree. The much of these gender roles, there's not, there's not a biological basis. There is, um, it makes sense for what was needed to live basis. But anyway, let me not get on a whole nother rant. My point is because these gender roles and the way we view gender is kind of a societal contract. Um, I can see how it's problematic to say gender dysphoria is a mental illness because it's like saying, you know what? Let me not even start. Let me not even start. J- just know if you're curious about my opinion and the, the official opinion is it's not a mental illness today. We've updated that. And I personally don't, I don't think, I don't think it's a mental illness at all, but I think you could have comorbidities like depression or what have you. Was recorded at a time where gender dysphoria was in the DSM-5 as a mental illness. So for her to like dig up an old clip from years ago of me talking about my own experience being trans and attacking me for it, sending her little army towards me to you know harass me on my pages, my social media for days when you were in trouble for talking about trans in the way that you did and you called me to help you basically. And now you're t- attacking me for how I talk about myself being trans. Girl, bye. That's all- yeah, it's, it's really dumb. So basically Blair was talking about her mental health at the time gender dysphoria was in the DSM-5. The DSM-5 is basically a book that helps you diagnose mental illness. So it was in there. And years later, Trisha found that and is trying to roast Blair for discussing her experience as a trans person and how it related to the DSM-5 at that time. That's really messed up, especially because you asked, this is somebody who understands this trans world way more than you, so much so that you asked this person to come on your podcast to explain it to you. That's messed up. That's why like, it's so crazy seeing all this drama with her lately. It's like, I would love to defend her because that's another thing. Any of my friends who are YouTubers, who I love and I have their back, I'm the most loyal person. If Jacqueline's ever under fire, guess who's there defending her? Me. When JC is getting hate comments, guess who's there defending him? Me. Even to the point where sometimes they tell me to calm down, but I'm very protective over people that I love, which is why even when I collab with Trisha, I got so much hate for it and I went to war against people who were hating on me for it. I was like, no, I like her. She's cool. She's funny. She's a vibe. Fuck you. So- yeah, I totally get that. Like, why wouldn't you want to hang out with somebody who's cool, chill, fun, funny, complete vibe? And they're inviting you to stuff and they're nice to you. You would totally think that person's your friend. You know what I mean? And somebody like Blair, who Blair, it's the kind of person who's just like, I want to live my life. I am not going to apologize for living. (laughs) That's Blair's personality. So, you know, it makes sense. Now, if if Trisha hadn't had made that TikTok that offended Blair... Would Blair be would Blair be defending her today? I don't know. I mean, Blair is saying that she would love to, but I'm just wondering, Blair, what would you defend? Like, what is there to defend? We can talk about, you know, how problematic the way essay is being discussed. But other than that, what can you say? Like, how can you defend... How can you defend somebody's doxing a person who's no longer with us and saying that this person went to jail (laughs) when that's found to be a blatant lie? Like, how, how do you defend that? How do you defend the poor behavior that she's had over the years, even when she's apologized? Those apologies have been really, really not well, they're not well done apologies. And sometimes she's taking those apologies back. Like, how do you defend it? I don't think Blair would, I don't think Blair would just come out of the woodworks 
and the and make a video for Trisha Paytas. I don't, I don't think, I don't know. I don't think she would. I don't think she would. Cause there's just nothing to defend. You know, maybe she would. I, I could see her like maybe going back and forth with someone on Twitter, but girl, like don't play. Like you wish what you're wishing for is you're wishing that Trisha was a real genuine person. That's what you're wishing for. You are yearning for the idea of a friendship that could have been. It can't happen. It can never happen because Trisha wears a mask and Trisha literally believes in living a, a life that is false. So you can't have it. That friendship that you wish could have been is not possible. And that's one of the hardest things about, you know, when you're some when you have somebody like Trisha in your life, that's one of the hardest things about it. Just accepting that you know, just because ex- sometimes when you're with someone like Trisha, whether it's at work or it's a family member or a friend or whatever. And Lord, honey child, what if it's your child? Oh, I don't even know. But one thing that's just so frustrating is you'll get in these crazy moments with them. And you'll just be thinking, why is this so hard? This is not supposed to be hard. Why can't we just have a normal loving relationship? Or, you know, why can't we have a normal, friendly, professional relationship? Whatever the situation is. And you're just losing your mind. And you don't know how to make it stop. And it's like, no matter what you do, no matter what you say, no matter what you try, this person is just going berserk. And you think about what could have, what it should have. You think about, God, other people don't have to deal with this. Other people are not like this. Why do I have to put up with this? If only this person could just see, then we could be happy. You think about all these things. You're yearning for a relationship that you think could have been. And one of the hardest parts is just to accept this person needs help. This person has BPD. And let me say the full term, you might have borderline personality disorder, narcissistic personality disorder, histrionic personality disorder, whatever. This person has a form of personality disorder. For those who don't know, personality disorder is actually a diagnosable mental illness. This is not just a, your personality sucks. No, no. <laughs> That's not what we mean when we say personality disorder. We mean something that that needs to be treated. And when you're when you have someone who has a type of personality disorders are really difficult. It's not like bipolar type two, which can be really difficult, but we can we can treat it and we can catch warning signs and triggers and. We can work with it. We can work on it. Personality disorder is even more difficult because when you have bipolar type two, you can acknowledge it. You can acknowledge your diagnosis, but when you have a personality disorder, that's the hard, the hardest step is, is getting somebody to even acknowledge that there's a problem. And when you have someone in your life who's who's dealing with that, you have to just accept that this isn't normal. This needs help. There's no, there is no woulda, shoulda, coulda. There is no scenario of if only this, why can't they just that? They can't. Those scenarios that you have in your head, they do not exist. They literally do not exist and they cannot exist until this person has been consistently and in good faith getting treated. That's the hardest part to accept. Maybe that's why I find Trisha Paytas so interesting. She just embodies so much of these things, so many of these signs that if you didn't know 
now you know. It's not just abnormal, it's a problem. And you're not crazy. That's that's one of the things that I really had to learn myself. I had to learn that that what I'm feeling is not it's not strange. What I'm feeling, how these people make me feel is actually a normal reaction. You, the the first the first thing is you have to realize and learn and understand that you are not crazy. You are not crazy. That's the first thing. Because once you understand that you are not crazy, then you start to validate what you feel. You start to stop brushing off what you feel. You start to speak up about what you feel. And you start asking around, asking others, I'm feeling X, Y, Z when I'm with so-and-so. Do you relate? And you start to realize that you're not the only one who feels what you're feeling. So when you know you're not the crazy one, you know that other people feel how you feel, you start to speak up on it. And you start to begin to address with this person things that need to be addressed. The first you have to first you have to understand that you're in a situation that's worth addressing. I guess that's why I really like, even though I freaking hate, like that was so disgusting to me. I do not even want to, I didn't even want to see her face, much less at this angle. But it's definitely worth discussing because you deal with people like this in life and it's important to know what to look out for so you can defend yourself. If it's a workplace, defend your job. Like sometimes you're at risk of losing your job because of somebody like this. You know what I mean? If you're like some people are in really bad situations, like they're at at risk of losing custody of their children because the other parent is somebody like this. You know, like there's just so many situations in life that it took me years to learn that it's important to pay attention to what other people are doing and how they treat you because it, it might indicate something. Anyway, I'm rambling on. Thanks for watching this video. If you vibe with me, thanks for vibing. Um, subscribe if you vibe. If you think other people should see this video, you have to give it a thumbs up. That's how the YouTube algorithm lets other people know to watch it. Um, if you like, if you want to financially support, I have a donation in the description and I love your comments. You guys, you guys motivate me to keep posting <laughs> and you make this really fun. I'm going to get back to work. So until next time, much love, much luck. Peace out.